Hey guys, how are you? And welcome back to the channel. The Rolex Daytona is up there with the Submariner as probably the most homaged watches ever, full stop. If you go on AliExpress, you're bound to find a variation of this from a lot of brands. Parnas does a decent version. I reviewed one a while ago. Bugani Design does a version also with a lot of dial options, but they all have one thing in common. They all are powered by a Seiko VK63 Mecha Quartz, and they all cost $100. Well, the Daytona that we're gonna take a look at today is an automatic, yes, that's right, an automatic high beat chronograph, and it's coming from a brand that you may be familiar with called Suges. They're associated with Seastern, and I'm sure you've heard of them, and the quality on their watches, I would say, is up there, if not as good as San Martin or Kronos. On the website, the movement in this watch is advertised simply as 7750 automatic movement, which sounds a lot like Value 7750, but that sounds too good to be true. That's because it is. From my research, this is the Shanghai 3L ZF2. And funny enough, again, from my research, this is used in other watches. A brand named Fita use it in their, in their aeronautics collection. Joking aside from my experience with this so far, I feel this is what a Daytona homage was missing. Before going forward, I want to mention that this watch has been provided by the AliExpress platform for the purpose of this review. I don't have to return it. I will put affiliate links down below where you can find this watch. And as I'm sure you already know, tons of other products. Down below, you will find also a coupon code that will get you $20 off with every $200 spent. Now, how good is this watch? Let's find out. Before going forward, let's get one thing straight. This is a Rolex Daytona homage and I love it. Now that that's out of the way, we'll cover some dimensions which given the design of the watch, you'd be very familiar to most of us. These would all be familiar. The case diameter is a 38.5 millimeter measured on that ceramic bezel, lug to lug of 46.5, but we also have these mailed end links that take it up to a relatively accessible 51.5 just right on my 6.3 inch wrist. Great lug to lug case diameter combination. And again, probably no credit to Suges here, but this combination works really well, even on bigger wrists. The thickness is 13.7 measured with my calipers with a slightly raised sapphire crystal. But for some reason on the website, this is advertised as 14.5. Finally, the weight is 144 grams measured for my 6.3 inch wrist. Let's talk about the dial. This is where the magic happens. That sounds so wrong. This is covered by a flat piece of a sapphire crystal. Not sure if there is any air coating here as there is still a decent level of legibility even from weird angles. And I also couldn't find anything advertised anywhere if there is any. When it comes to the dial layout, no design points to suggest here as it is the case with a lot of homages of this style, but where they do shine is on execution. Usually in these cases, they have to justify the price tag and the watch has something going on for it rather than just the design. Some of the key things to cover here are the these concentric circles in all the subtitles, which are very well made and also the beautifully finished indices. Everything aligns the way it should. If I were to complain about something, but this is not as much of a complaint as it is something that doesn't bother me that much, is the text at the 12. The weird part is the font chosen. It could have been something a bit classier and also the top chronometer part. It could have done without that. But then again, this is just something that people might be put off by. But given that everything else is the way it is, I could totally live with this. The loom is pretty functional also, given the reduced space on the applied indice, there is enough of it to make a difference and to notice it won't stand out as much, but on like some divers, but uh, it's good enough to work with. The case is pretty well finished, almost a mirror-like finish. 
super high polished pretty much everywhere and to be frankly honest given the fact that this costs around $400 you would want that. The writing on the black ceramic bezel is very well executed and I really have very little to complain about here. At the two and four we have the very famous screw down chronograph pushers in the same high polished finish. Very easy to unscrew and to operate, but we'll talk about that a bit more when we get to the movement. And at the three, we have the screw down crown protected by a couple of crown guards, also beautifully finished in the same quality finish. The crown is signed with the S logo and has a rubber gasket, which gives that feeling of safety as this has a stated water resistance of 200 meters. In this case, the pushers are also screwed down, like mentioned, and they should provide additional protection. With that being said, not sure how many of us would actually take these watches in the water, but you should be covered in case you do. A couple of things to add here before moving on. There are no sharp edges or anything that might create any discomfort. And pretty much all angers, angles are well finished and the tolerances on this are very, very good as this might be a concern with watches that cost this much and especially on AliExpress. The movement. The movement is where things get interesting and in my opinion the main attraction of this watch because this is not the first Daytona homage made and let's face it it won't be the last either. This is powered by the Shanghai 3LZF2 like mentioned at the start which is a clone of the Valju 7750. This is a high beat 20,800 beats per hour automatic chronograph movement again like the Valju, it hacks, it hand winds, it has a stated power reserve of 45 hours. From my research, not sure if it will ever come to that. Some parts are interchangeable between this and the Valju. This movement costs around $150 or so. The prices vary a bit, but I think that if you have over a grand to spend on a watch with the real thing, you can definitely afford to service it also. A common thing that was mentioned a lot in my internet findings is the fact that this is very reliable and it can be regulated within cost standards. Now, that being said, mine runs at plus one second per day. Now, no matter how you look at this, this is very impressive given the, impressive given the, the nature of this movement. All in all, so far from my experience, I really think this has actually, this is actually quite good and it makes it stand out in the crowd compared to the other Chinese movements. I mean, how many automatic chronograph Daytona homages do you know about? If you do, let me know in the comment section below. The last thing that we're gonna talk about today is the bracelet. This is a three link oyster style with high polished mid links with screw pins to adjust. It features a high polished mill clasp with a safety latch with the S logo. Something cool here is that that small little piece of metal where the S is engraved allows you to slide your finger in there and flip it open, which makes it a bit more natural and it allows you to open the case, the bracelet easier. Overall, the bracelet feels really premium. And again, I would say on par with San Martin, which is really bold. And in this case, that would be the standard, probably the standard of bracelets on AliExpress. Something that really stands out here is the way that this bracelet fits on the case. I mean, the tolerances here are better than watches that cost much more. This is like the perfect fit. And I know this is the way they do things because I have a second watch from them and it has the same bracelet with the same tolerances. Since we're comparing them with San Martin, I would say this is way better on that part. Another thing I like is the no nonsense on the fly adjustment here since this is a homage they could have gone for something very similar to the real thing but instead they chose to go with something more simple that works not sure i even use it but i still like the fact they chose function over styling to draw the line here guys i think the guess so guess is catching up really quick with the so-called big watch brands and the fact that they venture off to try a different movement that hasn't been featured in pretty much 90%, 90% of all other watch brands sold on the platform. I personally think that with a bit of more advertising, they can probably be better. They just need to get involved a bit more, pick a brand name and just stick with it. I think this speaks for itself. Apart from the controversial movement, which is also the reason why I would recommend buying this, I honestly think this is that good. Now, that was it for me, guys. Um, I hope you enjoyed my review for the Suggest Chronograph 
Again, I'll leave links down below. Click a link, click a link, and um, click like, subscribe to the channel if you haven't so. And uh, thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.